Can you hear me? Don't be happy. One, two, three, test, test. Not so, not so good. Do I need to move it up or how's that? Is that any better? 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know where else to put it. I could pick it. Is that better? Vicar Janice, I'm actually doing my internship at St. John in, in, in Dundee. You may have seen me here a couple of times before. I have um, filled in for Pastor Sarah on a couple of occasions before. Uh, we had actually pre-planned to have me fill in this Sunday because Pastor Sarah was planning to go to her, her father's retirement service. However, as many of you probably know, she is in the hospital. Brief update on her, she's still in the hospital but she hopes to get out in the early part of the coming week. And um, so she appreciates your ongoing prayers for her and, and Randy. Uh, drive through communion and Bible study will be canceled for this week. All other meetings, activities, and so forth will be continuing as planned. So if you had a scheduled meeting this week, plan to come in and go for it. Um, let's see, the 12 weeks of Christmas... This Sunday is collecting Kleenex and paper towels, um, and you can drop, also drop items off on Tuesday between 9 and 11, and I think next week they said is canned chicken and tuna. Um, the youth group will be meeting next Sunday from 1 to 2.30, carving pumpkins and eating cider and donuts and popcorn. Sounds like a good deal to me. And then the uh, HEH has provided um, mixed dairy, meat, and vegetable boxes, and they'll be available in the narthex after worship this morning. And I think that's all the announcements I have. Um, so let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Mm -hmm.
Blessed be, oh, <laughs> blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let me be seated. reading comes from Isaiah 40, chapter 40, beginning with verse 21. A voice is asking the exiles key questions to remind them of God's power and faithfulness. They are told that God will save them. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off, like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal? Says the Holy One, lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them by all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We also have a psalm today, 147. Um, it is not uh, back and forth like we usually do. Hallelujah. How good is it to sing praises to our God. How pleasant is it, is it to honor God with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. 
the Lord counts the number of stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. The Lord lifts up the holy, the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music upon the harp to our God, who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, making grass to grow upon the mountains. God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed by the might of a horse and has no pleasure in the speed of a runner, but finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord in those who await God's steadfast love. Hallelujah. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning with verse 16. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated. Well, first of all, I need to say a thanksgiving to Pastor Sarah for allowing me to change the texts for this Sunday. She understands the life of a busy seminary student and said that if I needed to, I could use 
a sermon that I'd been preparing for class. And so this is one I prepared for my preaching class last week. You'll actually hear probably Pastor Sarah preach on these texts coming up in February, because that's when they're due, February 7th, that Sunday. But for now, let's hear about it today from me. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May the Holy Spirit grant us understanding and patience. Amen. So, reading these texts for today, I felt a little bit like I was on a swing set. Back and forth, swinging high and then low and then high again. First, we have Isaiah telling us to wait for the Lord. Then Mark speaks of immediacy. Immediately, the Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue and went to Simon's home. Immediately, the disciples told him about Simon's mother-in-law being sick. And immediately, Jesus went to her, took her hand, raised her up, and she began to serve them. Wait, but hurry up. Wait, but hurry up. And in the middle, we have reassurance from the psalmist that God builds up and gathers in the outcasts. But then we get back to Mark again. The disciples want Jesus to stick around in Capernaum and continue the healing because obviously he's drawing crowds. But Jesus tells them, no, we got to get moving. I came here to spread the good news. I want to get going and get preaching. I want to get doing what I came here for. Wait or hurry up. I think that the scriptures give us reasons to do both. Have you ever been impatient? Waiting for a grade on a school project? the result of a lab test or a biopsy, for news about something big that's about to happen in your life. I sure have been impatient. I experienced some very uncomfortable waiting several years ago when I slipped and fell on some ice, and I broke my arm. We went to the emergency room immediately, and I was seen right away but it felt like I had to wait forever to get the results of x-rays that they took. I remember saying to my friend that went with me to the emergency room, Judy, what am I gonna do if they say there's nothing wrong with my arm? It hurts so bad. Well, my friend Judy, who happens to be a nurse with lots of orthopedic experience, took one look at my arm and said, "Mm, we don't have to worry about that. In just a few minutes, the doctor came in with the results of the x-ray. Just a few minutes. But it felt like an eternity, waiting for those results. I needed pain relief, and I needed it right away. As it turned out, my wrist was very badly fractured. Lots of swelling pressing on the nerves, going through those bones in my wrist, causing numbness and making the pain worse than a simple fracture would have caused. And since this accident happened in the Columbus, Ohio area, the trip home was an agonizing five hours in the car, during which about every 10 minutes I asked my friend Judy, can I have another pain pill? And she would say, no, you just had one five minutes ago. It, was a, it seemed like the ride lasted forever. The pain was just indescribable, and nothing seemed to help it. It was 56 hours after that fall that I was finally scheduled for a surgical repair. I was blessed to have a very kind surgeon 
I saw he squeezed me in in the morning. I saw him about 7.30 in the morning. But because he had a full schedule, I wouldn't get the surgery till about 6 o'clock that evening. And he could, I mean, the tears were just coming constantly. So he could see how much pain I was in. And I said, okay, well, does that mean I have to go home now? And he said, no, no, we'll get you in the hospital. We'll work on getting some pain relief. And they did. And unfortunately, the pain relief didn't help. But I appreciated the attempt. I remember telling the surgeon as they were wheeling me into the operating room, Dr. Noller, you have my permission to cut my arm off if that's what it'll take to get rid of the pain. He chuckled and said, oh, Janice, don't worry. We aren't going to have to do that. But that's where I was. I was so impatient needing that pain relieved because I hadn't slept in more than two days from the pain. After the surgery, the pain relief was immediate. Yes, of course, I still had some surgical pain, but that was nothing compared to what it had been before the surgery. It was controllable. Well, I'd like to say that I learned patience from that experience, as well as lots of other experiences in my life. But to be honest, I haven't. I'm not a patient person. Like many people, I want answers, and I want them right now. I love having a to-do list and being able to check off items when I've completed them. I feel anxiety if I leave items unchecked at the end of the day. I have prayed on many occasions to God regarding some worry or problem that I have in life. And my plan, with very good intentions, is to let go and let God. Instead, I grab the problem back and figure I'll do some work on it first before I give it back to God. So how's that for lack of patience and trust, too, I must admit? Like that common prayer that we've all heard, dear God, give me patience and give it to me right now. So which is it? Wait or hurry up? Are we supposed to wait? Or do we expect results from God immediately? If we pay attention to the tempo in the Gospel of Mark, it feels like immediacy is the rule of the day. The Greek word for immediately comes up 29 times in the New Testament, at least. 25 of those 29 times occur in the Gospel of Mark. To me, that says Mark is really all about, let's get this show on the road, let's get going. It gives you the impression of urgency in Mark's telling of events. So let's think about Simon's mother-in-law for a minute. Simon, Andrew, James, and John go with Jesus immediately after leaving the synagogue to Simon's home. Once they get there, immediately Jesus is told about Simon's mother-in-law. Now, think, think about this for a minute. The people of Jesus' time were very afraid of illness, a lot like us right now with this COVID problem. We're uncertain about how we're going to catch it or if we're going to catch it, and then if we catch it, how's it going to be treated? Is there a way to treat it? In first century Palestine, there were no antibiotics, no intravenous infusions of fluid, that would help a person with a fever maintain hydration. As a nurse practitioner, that scares me that there's no treatment available. That idea would be horrible. So it was natural then for a person who was sick to be excluded from their community. They may have been considered unclean, like people suffering from leprosy or they simply were not allowed or not able to participate in their community's life. They couldn't do the work that they needed to do 
whether that work was to take care of a household, serve as a fisherman, or in the case of Simon's mother-in-law, be a gracious hostess to the guests in her home. Those afflicted with illness would have felt lonely, afraid, guilty. Simon's mother-in-law probably felt a lot of guilt and shame that she couldn't serve her duty as a host. That was her, her position there. Now Mark tells us Jesus went straight to Simon's mother-in-law. We never do hear her name. He took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately she began to serve them. Now, I confess, my first reaction was, well, geez, she'd been sick. Couldn't they just let her rest for a little while? But consider this. The healing that Jesus provided this woman was just not physical healing of her body, but was healing of her spirit as well. With her fever gone, her strength returned, she was restored and welcomed back into her community as a functioning member of that community. The shame she might have felt at being ill and not being able to serve was replaced by this amazing ability that she could now fulfill her role as a hostess. She could return to full life in community. What a tremendous gift. And that's evidence as was seen in all of Jesus' healing miracles, heal, uh, evidence of immediate healing. Now that's the part of the high swing. You're on that swing set. And you're about as high up as you can go. And for those of you old enough to remember the old swing sets, that was when you were so high that the legs of the swing set started to come up out of the ground. Kids today don't know that because they've got safety regulations that cement them in, but I remember you'd swing so high those legs would come up and you felt almost, almost like you were flying. But everything we know by gravity, what goes up must come down. But here's where Isaiah meets us. Isaiah meets us at the bottom of our swing. We never quite fall to the ground because that swing is there to support us. But we come close. Isaiah's words provide us with encouragement when we have that urgent feeling that starts to take over and we want to rush to the finish line. But the finish line is nowhere in sight. Specifically in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, we are reminded that we receive our strength and endurance when we wait for the Lord. Our time is not the same as God's time. I'm going to say that again because it's important. Our time is not the same as God's time. While my 56 hours of waiting for pain relief from the fall to when I had my surgery felt like an eternity. It wasn't. Now, God does not promise that we won't face difficult times or that at times we won't feel broken and disconnected. What God does promise is that God will be with us and we can trust in that promise. The words of Isaiah always remind me of a poem my dear, dear Uncle Jim used to recite to all us kids. Uncle Jim's been gone, boy, more than 45 years, but I still remember this poem. God never promised sunny skies, nor days all free from care, but God did promise love and hope in answer to our prayers. Though raindrops on your window pane may dim your view today. They are like any other trouble. They are not here to stay. Waiting isn't easy, but God provides reassurance. We are made right with God 
by grace through faith in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is by this gift of Christ to us that we know the presence of God among us. Now let's get our swing. We've been up, we're down. Now let's get our swing going back up forward. Psalm 40, 147 gives us that. It provides a reminder that the Lord gathers all, especially the outcasts, those on the outside looking in. God heals the brokenhearted. Reassurance and comfort. We may feel ourselves broken by the experiences in life. Things that feel like separation from and rejection by our community. Illness, racism, political disagreements, religion, inequality. We worry, we get angry, we mourn. These are just a few of the ways in which we can feel broken and separated from our siblings in Christ. We turn to the psalmist who provides reassurance and hope by reminding us that the Lord gathers the outcasts and heals the brokenhearted. That message speaks to each one of us. So we're on that upswing. So which is it? Are we ready to wait? Or are we expecting immediate action? Wait or hurry up? Will we wait for God's action? Or do we look for God to work miracles in our lives right now? It is both and a very Lutheran thing to say. We go to God in prayer seeking relationship with God. We share all of our hopes, desires, and worries with God. Yes, of course, we would like immediate repair of all of our broken pieces. And we are called to wait for God. God has promised to be with all of creation, both now and in the future. Jesus will return, so we are able to wait and trust in God's presence in the here and now. Amen. And now we join together in confessing our faith according to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will judge the living and the dead. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. We give thanks for the witness of your servant, Luke, the evangelist, whom the church commemorates today. Lord, in your mercy. 
in our prayer. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, may your word of justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt, especially Pastor Sarah, Rex, Mary, Lee Etta, Carol, Faye, Nancy, Carol, the family of Hal Broderick. Join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of truth, you show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justices, mass magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as you raise Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you, especially Hal Broderick. We give thanks for their witness, confident in your rescuing welcome for all. Lord, in your mercy. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people. In the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered as one, we now join together in the Lord's Supper.
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit with the saints and all across time and space, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor.